Hey, it's Tom from WPWithTom.com, and in this video, I'll be covering the Elementor Pro Form Widget. So before we dive in, I just wanted to say if you don't already have Elementor Pro, I highly recommend picking it up for yourself. And if you want to do that and support my channel, you can get it at WPWithTom.com slash Elementor. I also wanted to mention that I'll be covering all of the Elementor Pro elements in videos, so be sure to subscribe for more videos if you're interested in learning more about Elementor Pro. And with that all out of the way, let's dive into the video here. So the form element is one of the more powerful ones built into Elementor Pro. Not only is it a great element that they have, but it also gives you the ability to add a form to your pages or multiple forms to your pages without actually having to have a separate contact form plugin. So that is a huge benefit alone. And let's just go through the process of adding one to this mock website here. So this is just an Astra starter site template. And if I just want to add one in over here, I can hit plus. I'm gonna do a full width section right here. And then I'll go and add an element. So what I'm gonna do is just search for form up here. And then I'll just drag form over and drop it in. So out of the box here, we actually have a decent looking form just right from the get go. You can actually leave this as is or just change a few things if you want to change your email where it's going to go to. And you can have the form set up just like this. But I'm going to go through a few different things here and just show you some styling that you can do with the form, some basics that basically anyone can do. So if we see right here, it says form name. You can change that if you want. I'm just going to make it say contact. And then for name right here, that is this right here. If we click on this, we can open it up and it says what type of form it is. So it says text form. You can change it to email, text area, URL checkbox. There's all different ones that you can use right here. I'm going to leave it as text in this case. And here is where it says label. So this is going to be this one above this is the label. And then the placeholder is the lighter one with inside of the actual box here. So if you want to change that, you can. Down here, you can make it required or not. I like to make all the forms fields required when you have a basic form like this. And then I'm going to make this 50% just so you can see what it looks like. So when you make it 50%, it only takes up half the area. Now, if you wanted to, you can close this. And if let's say you wanted to duplicate it and have one for first name, one for last name, you can do that. You can make this one say first in the placeholder in the label and then duplicate it right here and then make this one say last. I'm going to delete it and I'm just going to go to email. Again, make this one required and then I'll make this 50% here. So now you can see the form changes as we change that. So instead of being like this, we have it side by side on the top line now with the message below. Now if we close this one, let's go down to message here. And this one by default is going to be a text area as well. I'm going to make it required as well. And right here, you can choose the number of rows. So right now it has four rows of typing space. If you want to add five, you can see it gets a little bigger each time you add one and you can do it as needed. I'm just going to leave it as 10 just for this example. And then I'll move on down to this area right here. Input size says small. If you want to make it larger, you can. Medium, you can see how it changes each time. Large and then extra large for these big boxes here. I'm going to either leave it medium or small. I guess I'll just make it small in this case. And then from here, we can go down to the submit button. So by default, you can see it takes up this whole area. If you want to change that, it's pretty easy. You can go over here where it says default for the column width and change that. Let's say you make it 20 and then it goes to the left by default. Now you can change these and change it right here and then also go up here and adjust it. So if we go to 100%, and then go to center like that, it will make it smaller. That's something I always get caught up on because I think it's kind of weird how that works, but I'm gonna leave that as is in the center right there. And then if we go down here, we have the after actions submit. I'm gonna leave that as is in this case. And then we have email down here. This is an important one because this is where you'd want the email to actually go to. So I'm just going to put in wpwithtom at gmail.com as this example. And then when you receive a message, when someone actually fills out this form here, it will go to this email that you put in here with this subject right here. So you might want it to be something like new message from whatever your website is or something you're going to be able to remember. Maybe you put asterisks in there so you can really tell what it is and it will stand out when it comes in your email box. 
and that's the important one that you want to change in here. We close this. You can also go into additional options. I'm going to skip that for now and we're going to get into styling this a little bit. So let's go over to the style section here. And what I'm going to do here is just go through this real quick. I'm going to adjust these so you can see what does what on here. It says column gap. If we make that larger, you can see that it gets further apart and closer together. I'm going to leave it as the default, which is 10. Row gap is going to just push this down from away from one another within the form fields itself right there. And then spacing, we can just change that as well if you want to just add spacing across the board. I think there's better ways to do the spacing on here, in my opinion. In terms of padding and things like that, I think you can make it look a little bit better. The color, if we were to change the color, you can see that this would be the color for the name. I'm going to actually make this white, but that's going to be because of what I'm going to be doing here in a moment. And then you can change the typography as needed. So if you wanted to have different typography, you could. Let's just go with bitter or something like that. It's going to look a little different. I know you can't see it right now, but if you had some color there, you could. If you want to change the color within the HTML field, you can do that. I'm going to skip that as well. And I'm just going to go down to where it says field. And within here, you can see it says text color as well. So if you wanted to change that, you could. That's what's going to be inside here. I'm also going to make that a white color as well so you can see it pretty easy. I might give this one a little bit more color to it or maybe a little bit of a gray color within there. We're going to see that as we go through this. So let's just go and make it like that. And within field, we'll also be able to change the background color. So if you wanted to see what it looked like, you could change that and get an idea of what it's going to look like within the actual image itself. So I might want to actually make that a little bit more visible here so you can see it a little bit better than what I had. But I'm going to go here and clear the background out of there for this form. I know that doesn't look that great right now, but just stick with me here. For border color, I'm going to make this one white. Again, you're not going to be able to see that. It looks very weird, but I'm going to go and add a background image to this to make it look better as we go through this. So down here in the button section, we can change the button color. So right now, the normal color is this grayish color. I'm going to go here and make this a blue, a nice blue color right there. And then when I hover over it, I don't want it to go and just do nothing like it is right now. I want it to go and change at least a little bit so you can see when you hover over it that you're actually on the button. So you want it to be at least slightly different in color. I'm going to go with that right there. And here I'll just go and I'll just update it as we're going along here. So you can also change the text color if you want. I like it that it's white. That's totally fine with me in this case. You can make it bigger, change the typography, whatever you want to do. I'm going to leave that as is. And then what I'm going to do from here is I'm actually going to go over and click on this. Click edit section for the whole section right here at the top. So I'm going to make this a stretch section and that will stretch out the form and make it full width right here. So now our form is taking up this whole area. So there's going to be two on the top. You can faintly see name and email and then message right there. So if I go over to style, I'm going to then go and add in my image. So if we click classic, let's just click on choose image. And from here, I'm just going to choose this beach one right here. I got this off of unsplash and I'll insert the media right there. So you can see that all we're picking up here is the water, but that's okay. We can go and choose center center and we're going to get more of the actual tree there with the palm tree in it. And then you can also do things like cover or something like that and you can see it a little bit better. Now I don't like how this message turned out here and I could go back and edit that within here. So if we went over to field and we went to text color, we can go and change this as needed. Let's just make it white so you can see it a little bit better. And now you can see it within the area here. So you could easily set something up like this. If you wanted to also go back, let's go and right click, edit section on the entire section here. And then you can also add something like an overlay. So if you wanted to, you can go to background overlay right here. And we can then go to background type, click on that. And from here, we can change the opacity of the overlay. So let's just make this a darker color. And you can see as we adjust the opacity here, we can make it a little bit more readable because when it's a little bit darker, you still get the beach effect, but you also can see the text within the form a little bit better as well. So you might not like that it's so stretched out here. So what we can do is we can actually just right click edit form. And then we go over to where it says advanced 
and here we can change the padding. So I'm just going to go and add 10 to the top, and you can see it's going to adjust as I do that. So you might want to add more or less based on what you want. I'll do 15 on the top, and I'll do 15 on the bottom as well. And then let's say we want some on the left and right. I'm going to just do 50 and 50 over here. So you see it brings the form in and adjusts as needed. You can keep changing this as needed and figure out what looks good for you. Maybe you want it to be like this. I'm just going to do 70 and 70 on the sides and then 30 on the top and bottom. Really, you can adjust and play with it and get how you want it to look. I think this form would go well with some of this website, and particularly these ones up here that say water sports. If you wanted to show the beach, that might work well with it on the contact form. But I really wanted to just show you how to edit this form a little bit and add an image in the background. If you don't want an image, it's really simple to just edit it and change the styling with the form and change the colors and things like that. So I hope this video was helpful in just showing you the basics of how to use the Elementor form widget. If it was helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up here and subscribing for more WordPress related videos. Thanks for viewing and have a wonderful day.